This is the June 10th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, we're being taped by uh, Frontier Community Access Television. We're viewing um, later by our residents and the public who like to see our, our meetings. First item on the agenda is the minutes for Tuesday, May 28th. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah, good, good. A bunch of uh, corrections. Um, starting on the first page where it says Cantor attended Union 38 negotiations, a tentative agreement was reached. Should just specify that that was um, Union 38 IA's inter, uh, instructional assistance union, not the teachers union. So mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. the way that reads, it would it's sort of vague. Where is that on the first page? Right, right in the middle. The meetings attended was reached. The teachers' negotiation, we have one final six-hour session scheduled for tomorrow. Okay. Six hours. Wow. Um, so that is uh, obviously not resolved. The, uh, the, the, the town clerk thing, I, um, I objected to a bunch more things than just that a higher hour, you know, a higher hourly rate upon retirement. I objected to not telling town meeting that it was fifty dollars per hour, um, and uh, yeah, and uh, in the elections, I I did not vote for um, John O'Rourke to be chair. Ooh. I voted no. No offense, but that's how I voted. Oh, the vote wasn't unanimous. No, it was right. not. Right, that's true. Yeah, one, one in fa two in favor, one opposed. It says vote on nomination, and then right underneath it, it says vote was unanimous. So that's. Um, it says vote was unanimous in favor. Oh, okay. And anything else, Phil? Uh, not that I can recall. Okay. That was, um, it. That was it. Did you get all those those amendments, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion that we vote um, for the minutes as amended. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? No. Okay. Good. Okay, next item on the agenda, uh, we have the, uh, the vendor warrant for $32,900. And six dollars. We have a payroll warrant of one hundred twenty-four thousand five hundred seven dollars, and a payroll deduction warrant of thirty-one thousand one hundred and fifty-four dollars. Make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Yes. Second. All in yes. favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil. Yeah. Um, multiple contract negotiation rounds in an attempt to wrap up the teachers' uh, union. Um, tomorrow we'll decide once and for all. I've been asked not to say anything disparaging whatsoever. So don't. My yes, comments don't. Will, don't will do that. On that note. Don't, don't say anything disparaging. Um, I don't remember what else. I didn't get to go to the Saturday, uh, and even because when when they announced Jason as the spe as the uh, lunchtime speaker, that piqued my interest even more because he's uh, actually the one person in the legislature right now that I think is just a rock star, and is actually getting things done. I'm so impressed with him. Who who is this? Your lunchtime speaker on Saturday. Oh oh, Jason, Jason Lewis. Lewis. Yeah yeah. Okay. He's I, I didn't go either. Oh, Where did you? Uh, uh, Eastern Mass, but. Um, I've been dealing with him on the uh, school education foundation budget stuff, and I'm just so impressed with his granular, nitty gritty command of the of the very complicated subject matter, and his responsiveness. And uh, he, yeah, he was asked a lot of tough questions on uh, Saturday. Yeah, and he did okay with them. Yeah. actually, you know. But he's he's the man behind the state in minimum minimum wage. He almost single handedly got that done. So we'll see more of him, I think. I hope so. Yeah, he's chair of the education committee. Yeah. 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 
Robert. So uh, I had a few meetings. I had a number of conservation commission meetings, and you know, it's, they're not really board meetings, but they're interesting. And we we met with Ron once or twice about site visits, and um, so we'll be meeting with Ron tomorrow with the RDA that we've now filled out, and and it will, which which is just a formality, really. But then eventually that'll lead to interesting hearings, and so. Hmm. And then uh, uh, we had a, uh, I, I had a very interesting site meeting down at the, at the South River where the Open Space Committee has received a grant to do some more invasive species mitigation. And, uh, and it, for me, it was really interesting. Down at the end of Station Road, I was in places I had really never been before. Mm -hmm. You guys all may know it well, but yeah. I didn't know. This is just a little bit upstream of the dam. Yep. And, uh, and the invasive species have taken over there. Bittersweet and uh, Japanese knotweed really terribly. And, mm. uh, and, and, and the state is very concerned about it too and rates <coughs> Conway very highly as, as space that needs to be worked on. And so we were there with a number of people from the state. Uh, and then we went over and walked deep into the state, the, uh, the other piece of the South, uh, South River State Forest, which is over across from John Holy's house. Right. You cross the high tension line and then you walk deep into the forest there where there's an old house Colonel Totman's house. Is this the place uh, on the other side of Bardwell's Ferry Road? Yes, yes. Yeah, you cross Bardwell's Ferry Road and then you keep walking. Is it a cabin? And, and, well, it's, it's so fallen down now, it's hard to know. But it looks like at one point it was more than a cabin, but I, I, I don't know. I used to and, lead after trips with kids there. Yeah, in the you, early 80s. you wouldn't be housing them in that no. place now, I know that. And uh, and it was it was and there's invasive species taking over there too, and so the state's very interested in working on it, and the people from the state were there with money prepared to work on it, and to to me the the uh, open space committee is doing a great job, getting grants and working on pr problems that many of us may not consider, some people may not consider important, but you know, you know they they will get nothing but worse unless they get attended to and the state's very concerned so that was all interesting mm -hmm. um, and uh, and, a, and a, oh, a few days ago, a week ago we had a meeting at FCAT with um, uh, some folks from Waitley and some of the other towns Conway's in the midst of trying to finalize our, our new franchise agreement and in our goals for the franchise agreement, we basically are saying we would like to be provided the same kind of services that the other three towns have from their franchise agreement. And the problem is that the other three towns, that, that nothing has occurred that's written in the other three towns franchise agreement that was signed about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been done by either FCAT or Comcast to pursue what those things are. and. FCAT has turned over its director, and the people at Comcast, who I think understood what was supposed to happen, have all retired. And so, so, so between FCAT and Comcast, they really have no sense of what to do. You know, what what do you really want? And there is what they have in the franchise agreement, but it's but it needs to be hammered out. So, so we're sort of starting there at looking at what what it is that they're going to get and then then we will know what conway is asking for and, and anyway so are, are, are we going to get a, a seven-year agreement to be coterminous with uh, mm -hmm. the other there's towns? no plan of that now whether we can negotiate that i don't know but, but i would like that yes yeah then, i thought that yeah. was the whole plan coming up yep. to, the, to the it would be great if we could get in sync with them yeah yeah well you know it makes sense we're, we're all in the in the same um you know, access television network, so to speak. What we tend not to talk about when we have meetings with, when Comcast is there, is what's happening with the FCC and the FCC's uh, change in what Comcast can write off of the funding that they provide to their subscribers or get from the subscribers and give to their, their television stations. And so, so, so that's sort of the 
unmentioned mm -hmm. topic in, in, the, in all of these meetings. So. Okay. Uh. Right. Um, last week I had the, um, the Massachusetts Municipal Association Personnel and Fair Labor Policy Committee meeting uh, on last Tuesday. And uh, at these meetings, we, we bring up a lot of um, a lot of what's happening in the towns and a lot of what uh, what's going on: civil service, non-civil service, union, non-union, uh, all kinds of things like that. Which is which is very interesting uh, when you hear the opinions of some of these other committee members and what's happening in their municipalities and how they're trying to solve some of these problems. Um, I'm very happy that we are not one of those towns in most cases. Some of these towns have some really severe personnel issues and luckily we don't. Uh, on Saturday I went to the uh, Massachusetts <coughs> Municipal Association annual Selectman's Leadership Conference. Uh, it was held in Sharon. Uh, we had a very good turnout. We had topics uh, including uh, open meeting law and uh, records, public records uh, requirements that you know all new selectmen need to know, and not only new but, but experienced selectmen. Uh, we had uh, uh, one of the programs was about finance and budgeting. Sam Pooler gave that. Uh, he is like the gold standard in terms of that that topic. Uh, we also talked about regionalization and shared services. That's one of the, the workshops that I went to. And um, we also talked about um, uh, the role of select boards and how they should cooperate with one another and their committees. And uh, oddly enough, that was you know, something that we mentioned at the personnel committee meeting on Tuesday that happened to be a topic with, um, uh, on our agenda for the leadership conference, which was, again, <coughs> we had two seasoned selectmen and um, actually Barry uh, Dell uh, Kelly you know, up in, in Buckland was one of the speakers. He's been a town manager as well as now a selectman. And we had Josh Ostroff, who is a very experienced selectman and former president of the MMA. And uh, they did a wonderful job of basically saying, you know, have mutual respect for one another at meetings. Don't say anything on camera that, uh, you know, certainly no personal attacks or anything like that. But it was, it was you know, quite interesting. And people brought up some, some very interesting things that have happened at their own select board meetings. And, and again, I'm happy that we have a very civilized demeanor here at our select board meetings compared to some of these. It's just unbelievable. I've seen some of these because in connection with work I attend select board meetings and uh, I've seen some interesting things personally. So I, I know they exist. So Can I just make a brief comment on your regionalization comment? Um, sure. Because um, twice in the past week I've been approached by people about this and th it, that topic is making its rounds again. Uh, and we, we have had committees looking, I was part of a committee that looked in, that studied for our f purposes doing a K through 12 regionalization um, because we, as you know, we get the transportation reimbursement um, for elementary that we don't mm -hmm. now. But just uh, we've studied this in minutia and none of the four towns can afford to regionalize without state aid. The, the estimated cost is between a half million and a million per year. Um, and it, we have to equalize health, and there's a whole lot of reasons. But we've looked at this, it's really, we, nobody can afford to do it without a special act of le from the legislature. Well again, so one, one of the things that came out of, out of the, that regional and shared services situation was that it's much easier to share services that are information based, okay? It's much harder to share services, especially um, your emergency services and where you have to move physical resources okay over distances obviously that's you know something that, that doesn't work too well but you know certainly things like we have like our regional 911 which works very well here and in the east every every town 
has their own, okay? And they, they try to share those services, which is good. And you know, things like, like health services, sharing the nurse, certainly things that aren't um, needed on a daily basis, it's better to share if you, you have to move personnel around. Um, what was the other big one they were talking about? They were talking about, oh, well, yeah, inspection services. We have inspection services as well, we do that. And you know, when you look at, when you look at the FERCOG, and it's interesting, when you go to these conferences and you, you have selectmen who are part of other regional planning agencies, they all say, boy, you guys, you guys over at the FERCOG there, you guys are a model, you guys do all kinds of stuff and you do it well. And you know, I've heard this from dozens of people over the over the years that they look at the FERCOG and Linda Dunlavy and her staff and the way they operate things and uh, it, it's really a model. There are 13 RPAs in the state. A lot of them look to um, the FERCOG for you know guidance and a, as a model for what they do themselves. You know, because we've had you know the FERCOG has a number of very successful regionalization and shared you know. Uh, services type things that some of these towns in the east just can't can't get a hold on you know so it, it can be a difficult thing but um, you know shared services is for us in the in the west especially it's, it's something we have to look at very very carefully if not you know not strict regionalization but shared personnel things like 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 we're looking now at uh, the FERCOGs looking at the uh, integrating HR and we've got we're looking at integrating HR for uh, we've got a we've the got a contact towns. grant yeah to do HR yeah. among the four towns in the school you know it's important yeah, that's, that's going to be really hard for the school to do it but they did identify that the IT is one area oh the where, IT too because yeah. if they could hire if they could have help hiring one more person in the school thing mm -hmm. then they could possibly do sure. you know, they, we talked about that but, yeah um, yeah they, the HR. And certainly the, really the accounting services that we use, that, that saves us a tremendous amount of money, you know. Uh, so that's important, those shared services. So that was, that, was, that was a very interesting conference, a lot of good information and uh, great attendance. We had 90 plus uh, select in there, which is, which is super, absolutely super. And that's what I did. Okay, public comments. Do we have any public comments? Are you here for public comments? <clears throat> public comments about um, your About anything meetings? you want to comment about. Anything I want to comment about. Yes. Um, I will be commenting when we talk about the um, highway storage facility and the highway department's equipment stuff. Okay. I have comments about that area. I don't okay. think I have any other comments generally. Okay. In the moment. All right, so there's no public comment. We have old business. We don't have anything under old business. We have new business. First item on the new business, highway department. Um, declare a surplus and authorize to scrap various pieces of old equipment. Is that the list, Ron? That is the list. Okay. And you have this list, Mary? No. You want us to give you permission to uh, basically declare these items as scrap? And well, to clear them as surplus, surplus and scrap. Surplus them. And scrap yeah. Them. yeah. Okay. You want to tell us about any of these? There looks like we have. Of the stuff was there. Looks like we have a bunch of plows and uh, a rotary head mower, a front truck mount, York rake, and a dump body. Okay. So you have pieces of trucks hanging around. And you have plows hanging around. Mm -hmm. There's 11 plows. 11, 11 plows. plows. This is the old plow graveyard. They're, <laughs> they're right before you. There were some there before Ron's time. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more now. Um, is there also a, like a sander? Is and we're that still, we're keeping them. The one, that's, the, the one that's on this side of the stone wall towards the little school hat, the little small schoolhouse, that one. They're both some sanders that are there are still used. They're still they're still used. So all these items are beyond their serviceable life? Yes. Okay. So why are there Any 12 plows? Well, there was probably eight plows there when I came aboard, so. It's been, it has been the... Just in case you might need them someday. Yeah, it's been that, and it's 
that area has been the sort of, this is part of my question about sort of how that, that whole area gets managed. And that area has been the old equipment graveyard. And, um, been the old, and so all the comments about we need to put the equipment under storage, under shelter because, and in a storage building because it's an attractive nuisance for the kids. There have been a lot of attractive nuisances for a long time that, you know, aren't going aren't, we're not part of that plan. So. And it ends tonight. Yeah. So this, <coughs> this is the, this is the, right, and what I had understood was that, and that, you know, it took doing some paperwork and getting things to, to be able to, that it wasn't so easy as to call up somebody and say, haul away the old plows, that it took processes, and that's why this is happening tonight. Any other questions for Ron on these items? Does the town get any money from selling this stuff? Or do you have to pay people to come and pick it up? I'm not sure. I'll work on that, but, I'll, but if I can get some money out of it, we will. Are there auctions for old plows? Yeah, that's Is there the scrap dealers for old plows? There might be a scrap dealer that we can hire to come and, or get them to take it and maybe give us some money for it. Scrap right now is pretty bad, so. Is there anybody that knows about old plow markets and possible money for them that well, you can call up really and get hard. answers plow to? Plow museums. The plow, I don't know. Plow museums. <laughs> plow museums. <laughs> yeah. We got, sure got one. Got we, could, we could be the new attraction <laughs> right. in Conway. That's a good idea. We increase the tourism. Outdoor spread. sculpture garden. We we invite the kids. In front of the school, have our own museum. How about the piece of equipment that's still in the South River Meadow, the the uh, the oh, gravel sifter or whatever it's called? It'll be moving shortly. And, but that's not being scrapped. No. no. It's, it's need to that. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Any other questions for Ron? All right, I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, declare wait, wait, these wait, items. Wait, wait. So what's going to happen with future future plows that we're, we're not we're not dealing with future plows right now. We're only dealing with these. These we'll, plows. We'll, we'll figure out a policy for future plows. Okay, but so there'll right be a now, policy plan for how to but, right because right now it's been the obviously the policy was stick them there, and then when one busts next year, where does we'll, it go? We'll work on a policy moving forward. But for right now, all we're dealing with is is to declare these items surplus and to authorize Ron to scrap these items, get whatever money he can for them, um, and, and that's that's the motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, that's good. All in favor. Ron, you can okay. do what you have to do with these things. Great move, Ron. Our right, next item, proposal for new road by Sheep Barn to approach the salt shed. What do we got on it, Ron? What I'm looking to do is because the new owner is planning on putting a driveway in front of the sheep barn out to the existing road. My concern, and it's a huge concern, is when we're, us or people using the salt shed are coming out, and if somebody's coming out the other driveway. Uh, along the, the sheep barn, right. so they'll be coming out onto that access road right where the sheep barn you, you mean on 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 the south side of the sheep barn yes. there's going to be a road right next to the sheep right barn next to the sheep coming so on. they have a circle driveway from their property so they're going to right, come right. out okay. and all i can see is a truck with a plow coming down out of the salt shed and somebody coming out there and right the corner. Mm. i mean you can't hear you see nothing and i just if we, go, if we move it over and we looked at the trees, we'll just have to limb a couple limbs on each of the trees. You won't have to move it past the tree? You can. We can go between, there's three trees there, two on the sheep barn and one by the schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. We can go right between, between them. Right. So, that so will actually make our access up to the new facility. So we're, we're, we're moving the road over to the east? Yes, towards the school. How far? Uh, approximately, no, probably 30 feet. 30 feet. I yeah. thought their proper, that property yeah. ended right right past the sheep we, barn. I have all the pins. We had the surveyor out and yeah. our, found all the pins for the property. Actually, when we dug the electric line, 
How are we doing with the electric? We're just waiting for a meter to get put in. I thought that it's was, all it's all moved. Yeah, it's all. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and we found one of the pins when we were digging now, but um, it's actually probably more like thirty feet, thirty forty feet. From the sheep bar. We'd be oh. going on the other side of the transformer. The right. Entrance right. Line. Okay. Go on the other yeah. side the transformer. And then it would just be a straight shot up. And so on here, could you show us? Sheep barn transformer. There's the sheep barn, there's a right transformer. There. So we go there. So is it gonna go between these trees and the there's a, and the little there's schoolhouse? There's a tree right here by the school and that that's not really showing. So it'll go right by the schoolhouse. Yeah, it'll go right by the schoolhouse. Hmm. Yeah, that's not okay. I was also planning that if we did that we'd put a couple parking spots for the old schoolhouse okay only because people use the schoolhouse and they're usually parking in our roadway and, and we're doing that primarily for safety for safety is my biggest concern there and I so what's wrong with just a mirror that you know at the edge of the seat barn that shows who's coming you know concave mirror or whatever because you, when, when you have a deeded contractual uh, right of way, it's the other person's duty to, 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 you know, the other people have a duty to be aware of what they have reasonable, you know, notice could be there. So like I, I don't. Do if mean? there's an accident, it's more li most likely to be. Their to, land. To, 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 right. We, we don't you have a right. deeded right of way. So if, have, if there's an accident on the deeded right of way. And you're just going up and down a straight road, and they're turning onto it. They're going to have the liability, not the town. No. It just seems to be a over. It, that could over, be fought. I mean, depending on the circumstances of what happens. Is, um, is, but that that schoolhouse is that you know there's just a whole lot of people that made a whole lot of sacrifices to make that happen, and when you change the aesthetics of that without their knowledge or consent, that's a big deal. That, that that's you know, yeah. And I, I wouldn't want this considered until after you have Muriel Antes and all the historical society and historic commission people that really sacrificed to make that happen and have done such a nice job. Um, you you got to get their like, buy into this proposal before you ha enact it. it. How's it going to affect the aesthetics of the school? Well, if there's trucks going 30 feet closer to it than there are now, that's right. Like, that's right now, the, there's, the trees are the buffer between the, the equipment moving. Um, between the equipment moving along the road and the, you know, the farmhouse, I mean, the schoolhouse sort of sits over by the side. I mean, it seems like making a decision without a site visit with people, I mean, I, I would really hope that there'd be a site visit and you'd roam around and you talk about the safety issues mm -hmm. and talk about, you know, and are there, you know, creative solutions like moving their road, you know, their driveway a little further or mirrors or, or you know, right, to get the buy-in, because if you just go and do it, wow, that would be, and, you know, and I, I know there was a lot of attention when this road was put in, I know there was a lot of concern about these trees, which have been sort of the two big trees. Um, well, one of them's probably one of them's be pretty much going. The other ones ain't too far behind it. Yeah, because it's the root systems have been too compromised by the existing road. But so I think, but yeah, it just seems to me I really agree. So who do we want to get involved in this venture? Aside from the, um, it, the Muriel Antes, Howard Boyden, uh, the the uh, historical commission, the historical society, all those people that have. Uh, and the school. And, and, and right. the grammar school, because they use that as well. And so, you know, there's just... Because, right, to, right, to the extent it, it changes the footprint of the, that area's use. Changes the footprint? It changes, like right now, the footprint of the, um, the use of the highway department yeah. is here. And yeah. if it then, you know, it gets, it, cha it makes it, it expands that footprint. I, I mean, I don't know what what happened to the old road, but it 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 moves into sort of school property. I think there's, you know, I think the whole issue of of what's the school, what's the historic, you know, that there's multiple things there, and so who are all the stakeholders related to that? And it seems like school and historical folks and the people. Yeah, Howard Boyden's oxen were the one that pulled the thing there. And Muriel Antes donated the school. 
So, I mean, it's... Right, and it could be that, you know, there's going to be parking spaces. It could be making it more accessible to community. You know, there could be a way to have it be a positive thing, but it seems like... The, I, I, this, this, I, is, this is not a, a, a right-of-way or road that's going to be used excessively. Well, it's by used, highway equipment. It's used by highway equipment. Mm. It's used by highway equipment. Yeah. And and right now, the road that uses the highway equipment is not that far over. And so we would never be using the old road. I mean, we obviously wouldn't maintain our right of way through there. But as far as I think it, this is one of those things, it's not really about right or wrong. It's about good manners. And when you make decisions that affect things that people care about, you just invite them to participate in the decision. And um, you know, right, it's, it's not up for a vote tonight anyway. Just, just let them know. The night, we send a letter to the society, the commission, Muriel Antes and Howard Boyden, saying we're going to be considering this the next time you're invited to come and speak about it, to voice your concerns. And then you can go ahead with a clean conscience done without having to worry about offending people, which I know is your concern. Now, you know, this doesn't seem like that big a deal. That's why. That's, that's your perspective. Why, that's why you got to hear from them. Everybody. This is this is. This I is thought we were saying <clears throat> on the sheep barn side of that of the all the trees. D no. Did, There's that, a room. There, it's right up against it. It's yeah. right up against it. Here, you want to? No, no, I have no, okay. yeah. no, huh? to. No, There's actually what we'd be doing is moving the roadway on town property. Yes. Yes. And if you, I don't know if you have, see where the town property is, mm -hmm. where the line is, it goes just to the... Yes, up to the east of that right away. Yeah. yeah. Where's the, the, the... All right, Tom, Tom, do you want to coordinate a meeting between Ron and all the stakeholders involved? I, I would in say this? just invite him to come to the next select board meeting. No, just, no, let, huh? let's, let's start with a meeting with Tom first to get their input. And yeah, just, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know where it is. Just, yeah. And yeah, could yeah, I put I, on yeah. that list, too, please? You know, I don't see and actually, that. I know Ruth Parnell was very involved with uh, the, the road and the tree concern and whatever. She, it would be good to add her to the list. Because, right, in the category of, you know, sort of an ounce of prevention is a pound of yeah. cure. That and Dave, Dave Barton was really active in it. Peter Engelman was really active in making that happen. Okay. Would you coordinate that, Tom, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. Just so everybody's on the same page. All right. Any other, any other items on, on that situation? Oh, sorry. It's up to the Okay. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Thank Thanks, you, Mary. Ron. Okay. Okay. Next item, um, Highway Facility committee uh, we have to sign contract with designer for storage building and maintenance facility okay has everybody had a chance to look at this contract yeah, yeah I got a question um, we're uh, we're all procurement regulations complied with in bringing this like I, I thought something over 50,000 has to be bid no that's not that's only um, Fifty five hundred. It's yeah, only the fifty thousand. Seven thousand, I thought. It's just a, for the engineer. Yes, it's seven thousand. Yeah. Okay. Seven thousand. Ne never mind. Yeah. It's okay. not the. You're drawing your. I never minded my objection. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Any any other questions that you have? Uh, I think it sounds like a deal. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, our our town council has looked at it. And he basically says, "Yeah, it's okay." It's well, I don't think his three concerns were really that were were quite valid. Like, are we going to do anything about them? And he, they were pretty specific about the indemnification. If it were anything other than a design contract, yeah, this is design. I'm concerned with that, but I don't see um, much risk. With this isn't active contract. active work. This is design. Uh, that's my that's my take on that particular issue. We're not going to be late on the payments, so we're not worried about the service charge situation. Uh, Non-binding mediation uh, in cases of dispute, as long as the town re retains its right to court action, that's that's moot. And, it, and it, yeah, it's non-binding. So. We actually added that 
the town would be ownership of the plans, which was never the mm. case before. So when whatever we spend with these guys, we'll, we're not. It's not like we only got lucky on the last time because the other company went out of business. That's why we're able to use them. Plans, we posted so. everything on the web, and, it, and so we could download it ourselves. <laughs> and and there is there is some urgency yeah. with with getting this started. Um, any other questions? No, I was told that there is a local Conway-based builder that is interested in bidding on the construction of it. And you probably heard that already as well. Make, make, right. make sure the committee knows the name. Mm -hmm. They'll make sure, right. if you have Andrea do it, make mm -hmm. sure she knows. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll go out. Everybody who's available can bid on it when, at that time. But uh, Andrea is very good about sending it out to particular people who have expressed interest. So mm -hmm. um, if, we, if we go through her... No, no, we plan on using her. We've been in contact with her. And mm -hmm. Can't do anything without her. Any other questions on this? No. No. No questions. Rich, okay. Great. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve this contract with the Reland Design Associates for the design of uh, the equipment storage building for the Conway Highway Department. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay. What did this equivalent cost last time? What we did last time when we did the whole project, like when we spent $130,000. For, for this piece of it or for the whole no, thing? No, no, for the no, whole thing. That was the whole thing, right? For the whole so, thing yeah. from scratch, meeting with the committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making many So this might have been a third of it? Variations. Mm -hmm. What's that? But, well, if we had done it the way we did it last time, we would have been pretty much in the same boat we were last time. Some of the numbers we got from the guy that was with, I can't think of the company's name. Reinhardt. Reinhardt yeah. gave us some prices to do it again, and we was up in uh, over $100,000. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. And that... Yeah, what that did was, that was a lot more than these people are doing. Yeah. So, not, yeah. not really. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. And having done that previous work is why this is coming in. So right. Well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, next item, personnel committee Thanks, proposal to allow part-time staff prorated sick and vacation days. Okay, now this revision has been um, reviewed by the personnel committee uh, and is recommended by the personnel committee. Any questions? Uh, just, just a comment. It's um, for the purpose of, of retention and uh, providing um, some relief, especially to part-time workers who may, some of them may be scheduled to work on holidays, and um, for a part-time worker uh, not being able to work a day um, sometimes doesn't feel like a holiday because you're not making any money. So this, this is a way to to partially address, and again, it's prorated. And uh, Jan, I worked with Jan to come up with those uh, those numbers for for uh, what should be prorated. And you'll see, from zero to ten hours, there's no there's no compensation. And so, really, the only change is from ten to twenty hours. Um, and we're adding specifics for people who work more than twenty but less than thirty five hours, which is defined as a full time position in Conway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. that's that's how we came up with uh, with those numbers, and it's um, it would be a very it would be groundbreaking. This is not something that other towns are doing. That's a good reason not to do it right there. <coughs> well, and and we have already lost staff because we didn't provide sufficient uh, uh, a sufficient uh, compensation package. So, but in effect, uh, fifteen people. I, I, somewhere around there? Yeah, the numbers are, yeah, are there. Mm -hmm. There's mostly the yeah. transfer station guys yeah. and the police so, officers. So the, the first thing that I thought about when I read this, you know, because uh, I wrote the frontier policy, uh, the frontier policy on part-time uh, sick leave. And um, much to my chagrin, what that allowed was the hiring of somebody part-time who immediately on the first day of work took... Uh, took the eligible sick day, and then after that took the eligible holiday day, 
and then after four free days on the, on, on, you know, whatever, quit. And so that the, if you don't specify that there has to be a probationary period of time before these benefits accrue, then you open yourself up to somebody that decides on the first day of work that they don't like their job, but then nurses nurses all of these things. This, this okay. will happen. Two um, things. Conway has a three-month probationary period, mm -hmm. and this is earned time, earned yeah. leave. Yeah. This is not granted, this is earned. earned. Yeah. It's, it's crude. So, so those, you have to certain number, those number points are... Uh, from, so where, where and where, did, where um, I was looking for the sick the what is what's the town's obligation to buy back sick leave that's unused because it refers to it but I couldn't where is it um, the because that that's the, really the, the crux of the matter but where does it refer to that um, yeah we don't we don't buy back sick leave there's a, there's a footnote here that says a cap too small encourages employees to use it or lose it. One year's worth is less than for whatever. So I don't, I don't understand what this footnote oh, refers to. One year, um, people are, are allowed to carry one year of earned time off. It used to be that um, people accumulated earned time off um, forever, and uh, just just after I got here, we we got rid of that, and uh, and we now have no no further obligations, thank yes. goodness, yeah, for good. that. So, yeah, that it's, um, you can carry over one year's worth of earned, earned leave. Yes. And then it disappears. So I don't, what's the footnote about? Yeah. The footnote is about the incentive, to it reducing the incentive if the cap is to use small. it or lose yeah. it. Yeah. It's an explanation. So and um, if they're using sick pay, uh, sick pay that so so, I and I, I, I didn't have the whole policy in front of me. Was there a uh, obligation to have doctors whatever? Is there an obligation for the number of days that you can use without having a doctor's note? Is there? That's in the that's, that, all, that's, that's all in the that's in all in the regular personnel policy. This yeah. is this is amending two sections of it to allow for part time people to have the specified benefits. Everything else in the personal policy holds. Yeah, it's um, in Conway's policy. It's over three days. Uh, being sick. And then what most employ with the, the real groundbreaking stuff is to not have sick leave or personal days. It's just to have employee days to use as the employee sees fit. Um, and that's that's really where that's the progressive place where where. Yeah, well, and are paid, to. paid time off. And, and paid time and off. Paid time and, off. And actually, because, because when you set up a thing where they have to have doctor's notes, you are encouraging uh, the, uh, lying to each other in a relationship with your employee. <clears throat> well, the, that, that proposal is broader than this proposal. And it had been included in an earlier version. But because it's, it's, it would affect everybody and it's a major change, we're not presenting that at this time. This is only about sick and holiday time being mm -hmm. prorated um, for part-time employees, affecting especially people from 10 to 20 hours who don't get anything, um, but also people working above 20 hours. And then when, when it said that it's it, the holidays get go to the people that were scheduled to work them, so that strictly depends, so the department supervisor gets to decide who gets holiday pay then just by who they schedule for that day? Well, I, that, that's an interesting way to look at it. People are scheduled to work various days and holidays fall on various days. So for the people who are scheduled to work on the day that the holiday falls, they would get, um, they would get some compensatory time for that. And again, this, right. is, this, is, this doesn't cost anything. This is just time. So it's, it's, a, it's the cost of having somebody around or not. Um, but that's what vacation and earned leave is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I thought the fair thing would be just to have anybody similarly situated get the same benefit if, if rather than Yeah, but we don't have people who are similarly situated throughout throughout our, our work schedules here in town.
Any other questions? Uh, um, why are we doing this again? It's, a, it's an added benefit for uh, our part-time employees to uh, do prorated earned leave. It's a, it's a good, cheap way to create really goodwill, and I'm always looking for that because people are the hardest thing to uh, they're, they're the most valuable most important asset, asset you yeah. have. And uh, I, am, I am very interested in anything that can increase retention without increasing cost. Good way to put it. Excellent. The, the example I would have is that somebody that works at the transfer station on Wednesday and they're sick, should they feel obligated to try to, as a sick person, come in and work that day? Probably the one so place they, where it's okay to work when you're sick. But. Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, I mean, I don't want one of them. <laughs> with, you're already compromised. Dealing with the public on that you. day. Uh, uh, absolutely. We're, we're getting too far into the yeah, weeds. Yeah, but I, yeah. you know, this is this. You know, our personnel committee has um, has reviewed this, has recommended this. Um, it, it's a it's a fair way to handle uh, the prorated earned leave time for part-time employees. Uh, I would recommend that we that we uh, approve this policy. I'll make a motion to that effect. I'll second it. Do I have a second? All in favor? Um, I'll say aye. I'm aye. not in favor of this. I'm not going to vote against it. I'll abstain. Okay. okay. All right. Next item on the agenda is um, we have a complaint regarding noise from domestic geese that we're going to table for tonight because some additional information has come forward that we need to review. Seriously? Okay. More information is coming Seri forward? Seriously, yes. I, seriously. I'm, I, I'm working with the, with the Agriculture Commission. I expect um, that they will be uh, holding a hearing and uh, that it, it can finally be dealt with uh, according to the process that we do have in our bylaws. Yes, I wonder about that. Good. Okay. Next item: appointments. So um, do we have to vote on being tabled, or can we just table it? No, we just. I, I can just okay. table it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mary. Mary. Uh, okay. Appointments starting uh, July one, two thousand nineteen. Um, I'm not going to read out all these names. Would you guys review the list and see if you have any comments or questions? There's one correction to this list. Um, Leroy Rose is no longer a uh, transfer station attendant. Okay, that's a correction down toward the bottom there, transfer station attendants. All right. The rest of these are okay. Uh, we have the regional. We have the staff. Uh, through June 30th, 2020. Uh, what I'll do is make a motion for each of these subheadings, okay, after everybody has reviewed them and doesn't have any questions on them. This is the heart of the town. <laughs> Absolutely. These are the people that keep the town running on a, on a mostly voluntary basis. Um, and there will be one change further down um, under committees through June 30th, 2022. Uh, it lists Roy Cohen, um, but he is actually appointed by the Finance Committee. For which committee? Uh, for the Capital Improvements Plan. Uh, I was, that's what I was looking at. There's yeah. only three people listed there. so. Right. Every, everyone. Everyone else is. It's a three-year. Oh, oh, it rotates. Term, okay. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So he's he's recommended by the finance committee. Yeah. yeah we, so we, we don't we don't recommend yeah. him. Okay. Yeah. Any any other changes that you see, Tom? Uh, no.
All right, starting at the top, I'll make a motion under regional through a June 30th, 2020, that we uh, make the appointments for those people listed for those um, areas. Um, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next item, the staff through June 30th, 2020. If you do that, she might say something was unanimous when it wasn't. So, uh, yeah, it was. He, he nodded. I nodded. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. That's good. Uh, I remember what I vote for. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But but making it clear. I to thought the, I, uh, I thought I briefly made corner of the eye contact with her, and okay. she saw me. But I. Okay, so that was unanimous. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just, All right. Just under, making sure we don't run under staff um, through June thirtieth, two thousand twenty. Um, I'll make a motion that we approve all of those appointments. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Um, we have Dan coming down to public safety staff through June 30th, 2020. First is the ambulance department. I'll make a motion on the ambulance department for those uh, particular assignments. Do I have a second? So we're doing these separately, but sure. Yes. Second. Yeah. Okay. Phil? Yes, we have aye. a vote on that. All right. All in favor? Aye. aye. To save us the repetition, I will be voting yes on all of these. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, then for emergency management, uh, those uh, appointments, we have two. We have the director and assistant director. I'll move that we appoint them. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, Enhanced 911 coordinator. We have one nomination for that. Um, do I have a second on that? I'll move that we appoint him. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Okay. Aye. Under fire department, uh, that list of names, Aye. I'll make a motion that we approve all of those people to um, uh, the fire department in their various positions. Do I have a second? Second. Appoint. So that Robert Armstrong that's in there is not me. That's yeah, but, that's your son. My son, right. Yeah. So, Should it say yeah, we, well? We haven't seen you climb any ladders. As, as long recently. as it's not confusing to anybody. That's fine. Okay. No. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Police Department. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve all of these appointments to the Police Department. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. These guys have been getting their work out lately with the tree work. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Uh, committees through uh, June 30th, 2020. Uh, we have one. We have the facilities, Highway Facilities Committee. Um, I'll move that we appoint those uh, individuals to that committee. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. And just okay. to be clear, that's a one-year appointment because it's an ad hoc committee. Standing right. committees are three years, uh, and hot mm -hmm. committees are one year. Right. Okay. Um, next, committees through uh, June 30th, 2022. Uh, all except for that uh, correction on that first line that we made for the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve all of those uh, individuals to those assigned areas. Uh, and I'll move that we make those appointments. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Thomas. Uh, we have uh, one appointment. You met Grace Larson before. We've had a resignation from the committee, and so uh, we, can, we can appoint her now. And uh, um, we, will, we will probably have some, some catch-up appointments next time some cleanup appointments but this is the bulk of them um, okay. but we thought we'd put her on to this time so that she can meet with them if possible before the next select board meeting right okay yeah, yeah i saw her at the post office last week i had no idea what she was talking about so i'll make the motion to go ahead and do this but you you say agricultural commission do you mean i'm sorry conservation that is conservation commission thank yes. you mm. oh good catch yeah. conservation well, you might like to become the agricultural no no that was that was, also, that was that was but Okay, that's the... We, the, we met her with the conservation. Yeah. Yeah, Conservation Commission. Uh, all right. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Tom, do you have an update for us? I just have one other thing. Um, I Just this morning, I got a complaint from someone that the town meeting recording on FCAT 
the volume is messed up and nobody can hear the nobody can hear the volume of our of our uh, of the recording on FCAT. So I don't always or uh, or on one particular meeting. You, you would have to ask Kathy Bennett, but um, but she tried to watch it and she can't get the volume. Okay, so that's, on that. that's under so, concerns of the selectmen? Okay. Or yeah, but she just told me this morning, so I slid slid it in the forty eight hours. So oh, there you okay. go. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Does that require deliberation? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe it's a concern of the select. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's, a, a, that's, that's an, an excellent. That's an F cap. That, that's an excellent it is. Um, concern. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I've listened to select board meetings and I can hear it. So not the uh, select. It's the the town meeting. The, the recording of the town meeting. Oh, during the town, town meeting, meeting, not the select board meeting. Yeah. Oh, so she said meeting. the, the town. The, I haven't heard. The that. playback is messed up. She says. Oh, and of course, there are times when people don't wait for the microphone. That's yeah, true. Uh, that's, that's a problem. Yeah. All right, Tom. Let's have your um, update. Under committees, as you can tell from the appointments, Lisa's been doing a great job of contacting everyone up for reappointment, finding out whether they're interested in organizing the appointments into one-year appointments for ad hoc committees, and then it's supposed to say, and three years for standing committees. That's great. Okay. Um, and again, we will have some more next time. Uh, under departments, I understand that there is a critical need for more emergency medical technicians, especially people who can show up during the day for calls. I've put a notice on the website and hope to generate some interest. If all of you can talk that up amongst everybody, we really need people who can show up during the day. So uh, perhaps even retirees who are looking for something to do and uh, have are willing to be uh, trained again training is free if you work for the town for the following year so that's uh, that, that's all meant to uh, incentivize some, some more people because it's um, it's critical was, was that included in the tax bill that we needed EMTs or was it just yeah, other kind of so. yeah okay right. yeah um, after conferring with the personnel committee, I plan to initiate periodic staff meetings. Part of this will be the required annual harassment training. I hope through Maya and its employee, employee assistance program. Part of it will be similar trainings and part of it will be regular updates to enhance communications. This might be a quarterly kind of event. Uh, I'll be meeting with Bob Armstrong soon, uh, senior <laughs> pair. <laughs> soon to make a plan for the electricity aggregation survey. If anyone has any further thoughts on that, please let either of us know. Uh, one item we may want to consider is whether we want to offer a green plan that includes electricity from burning wood, as that has been controversial in the past. I hope we can be in communication with other towns about that before making a decision so that we can retain as much bulk buying power as possible. Our application to FEMA for a grant to assist in the stabilization of the slope from Delabar Avenue to the river is in its final phase. We've gotten feedback from FEMA and are tweaking the application. I'm managing to get the two computers procured with Roy's help, which were approved under the MEMA Emergency Management Planning Grant for FY 2019. We should have everything in order by the end of the fiscal year, which is when we have Great. to have the receipt into, into MEMA. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I anticipate needing a short meeting with the Finance Committee for at least one item related to end-of-year finances. I misplaced the funds for Ginny in the operating account, and it should have been in the salary account. Uh, we went over that last we time. We corrected that, though. Mm. For this fiscal year. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, the approval would be post dated to May of 2020, ensuring she could get paid and avoiding a meeting then. Uh, I'm sure Lori will be looking to her for assistance during the primaries and in preparation for town meeting. Uh, other, I will mention in case anyone has missed the sign in the triangle in front of the library that Mike Haley will be presenting Irish Road Croquet. Actually, it's more like Irish Field Croquet. Irish Cannonball Croquet. Cannonball. Cannonball. Cannonball Croquet. From 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., not 8 a.m. Well, yeah, he's, he's it, reserved it, the field from 8 a.m. Yeah. to 4 p.m. To set up. Yeah. Yeah, to uh, set up as a benefit for the Conway Sportsman's Club Scholarship on June 15th, coming right up. The expectation, though, Tom, is that it will be from 11 to about 2. 
So, um, okay. if people are concerned about just yeah. taking their entire day, yeah. eight hours. It, of y yes. Cannonball croquet. No, no. <laughs> yeah, he told me it's only going to be about three hours. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it depends. Yeah. Eleven to two. And the reason why that's important is that at ten o'clock, from ten to eleven, there is a bee walk at the South River Meadow. Right. And so, so you can come to the South River Meadow at ten. Go on a bee walk and hear about pollinators. bringing pollinators yeah. back to Conway, and and then still have time to come to the Cannonball Croquet. Absolutely, so. that's great. That guy's talk was uh, sadly very poorly attended. It was the worst attendance at a talk in years, and learned not to do a talk the night after town meeting. Oh, but um, but that was sad. Yeah, because that that speaker was amazing, and he is he's like the guy in this whole field. He's the guy that started it all. Yeah, and uh, and to have to have fewer than twenty people come to hear him talk. So as long as the weather is decent, when he sells out big auditoriums and stuff, that was it. Should be an excellent walk. Okay, mail. Uh, we got our beacons. Did you finish time? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Not yeah, we well. okay. Thank you. We got our beacons. Very important publication from MMA. Has a lot of good information in it. Uh, we all should have received from the uh, Massachusetts Taxpayers Foundation. This. But you didn't do concerns of selectmen. We missed it completely. Oh, we we got we got Phil's concern. Do you have a concern too? Uh, yes, I just wanted oh, okay. to make one more comment, and okay. it was, and I was really glad that Tom touched on this. But it's that the that the reason that we are going to be talking about the burning burning of wood is that the state is in the process of changing the rules that allows wood burning generators to be have renewable. their energy certificates qualify for for, for state subsidies. Yeah. And and when those rules get changed and there's an expectation that they will that means that we will be receiving energy certificates from all of the wood burners in New Hampshire and in Maine, as well as new wood burning plants here in Massachusetts. And they're likely gonna flood the energy certificate market. And they already are pushing on aggregations to purchase power from them and buy their energy certificates. Mm -hmm. There's their pressure. And, uh, and so our broker is just coming to the towns and saying, you know, do you, you want to have a, a, a policy on this? Or does your town, do you care if it's, um, you're buying electricity from wood burners or not? So what's, and, what's the sign, what's this in the spectrum of evil to good? What's the, where do they fit in? Is it better than oil, gas, worse than solar? What is dirtier than oil, if that's Dirty. what you're asking? But it's renewable, so that, that does, the, the trees regrow. It's renewable, but it takes 100 years to regrow the trees. So it's not renewable in that sense. It's not renewable in the intent of the law. The, the law was to have, and the, the law was to provide incentives for the kinds of energy we want to really encourage like solar and wind and and energy that's clean and and you know not contributing to climate change and, and, and the we has has broadened hmm. so so but the, the law is likely going to get changed to allow wood to be burned with almost no restrictions on how dirty it is. Right now there are wood burning facilities in Massachusetts, but they're forced to burn their wood very cleanly to qualify for subsidies. And that, it's in the law, that works today. And they're not as profitable as they would be if they were allowed to burn it any way they wanted. And so the state is changing the rules of the law without any legislative input because they want to, to say burning wood any way you want is okay. And But to me, the problem is that it will then open up Massachusetts to be funding all of the wood burning plants in New Hampshire and, and Maine that are currently being funded by the states of New Hampshire and Maine because they like the jobs. So inst I, instead we'll be funding them. I had a meeting today with the um, Green Energy Consumers Alliance, which is the, the gold standard here in Massachusetts for sourcing renewable energy certificates. And 
of course, they are staunchly opposed to this change that wood burning would become part of a renewable energy situation, and they are organizing a tremendous number of grassroots um, organizations, especially um, those like the Climate Action Network, uh, to you know uh, petition the legislature that 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 should not be passed. What's uh, the benefit for Massachusetts for for doing this? Uh, uh, so there have just been a series of four hearings where the DUER sat on a stage and listened to people give testimony as to whether this was a good idea or not. And it was mostly people speaking against it. A few people spoke for it. And the only reason for doing it that was mentioned in the meetings was that it is costing towns money to dispose of wood chips from tree removal projects that are going on in town and drive around Conway and you will see trees on the ground and they're being chipped up and, <coughs> and, it, and it costs the town some money to dispose of those chips. And if you own a wood lot, if you, if, it incre if you can sell your wood for more, if it increases the market for your wood products, then that's what you want. There's a lot of people that have wood lots that would like a better market for their timber. There was no one speaking to that in any of the hearings. Mm. Um, it was mostly that when trees are cut down for perfectly good reasons that the trees that can't be sold as lumber are difficult to d dispose of. Except by maybe turning them back into soil on site. <laughs> uh, th that came up in the hearings, but, but yes. Yeah, they could take them to Martin's farm up in Greenfield and they compost them. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. So I don't, you know, the, the survey that you're. I just hope that you get good, you know, that you design it so that you get in, that, that it's worth four hundred dollars or whatever the talent we're, we're paying for it. That you get information that's good and useful. And well, most of the survey, we well, the information we want is um, how interested are you in Conway having the option to buy additional green energy, but but now this this change in the green energy market has suddenly occurred to where there's going to be a lot of energy certificates up for sale and they may be cheaper to buy those energy certificates than to buy a wind energy certificate and and should Conway be able to proudly say we buy five percent more green energy certificates than we're required to by law and and then quietly have to say, and they come from burning wood. Well, no, we can, we can specify which, which we want. We can, and that's the data that we want to get from people in Conway. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a decision that we as a select board should make without hearing from the town. Yeah, so I think we need a background piece that I think I can develop with Bob, yeah. and I think we can work that into the survey and not have it get too complicated. Fine. That, that's, Good. That's, that's the goal. So that's, okay. I just want to say, so that's what, that, but, but people do watch our, our, our videos that, that right. Dan is making, and so, so, I, so I wanted to talk about it slightly, okay. and, then, and that's what's going to be in the survey. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, getting back to mail, you all should have received one of these uh, municipal financial data, which has all kinds of interesting financial data in it from the uh, Massachusetts Taxpayers Foundation. You get one of those every year. You get one of those every year for, with, with all kinds of interesting financial data. Um, I got a letter from the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Service District um, indicating to me that uh, there's going to be a meeting Tuesday, June uh, 16th. Um, yeah, everybody did get that letter. Tuesday I'm is not, not sure. Tuesday is not June sixteenth. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, July sixteenth. Um, yeah, uh, we all got that letter. Yeah, that's right here. Everybody got this letter, huh? Yeah, that's yeah, unusual. I'm not sure everybody got the Massachusetts tax data. Well, I'm wondering, is it in our mailbox? But maybe it isn't. Yeah, because I'm okay. I thought yeah, I, got I didn't this. get the finance trivia booklet. I got I got the, I got this letter. Too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought I got this letter because I'm the I'm the veterans rep. But I guess it comes to everybody. Idea. <laughs> Even yeah. I got one. All right, that's good. Okay. Oh, Terrific. inviting me to a session conducted by my town's veteran services staff. That's you, John, right? Uh, well, it's it's actually going to be the the county staff. Probably Brian Brooks. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, Brian. 
I don't have his last name right there. Or do I? Yeah, Brooks. Brian yeah. Brooks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they spelled community wrong. John Zahn Community Center. You oh. can't you can't misspell the word community. That's just <laughs> seriously. All right, well, we'll, say, we'll, we'll, we'll forgive them as long How as we know what they're possible? saying. Do we have any announcements? No. Any other announcements? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, next meeting will be uh, Monday, June 24th, here at the town offices. Anything else to come before the board? Um, I had had a request that we put the calendar on the. Oh, um, just because Sorry. I got to synchronize, I want to try to synchronize my travel plans so that. Um, we can do it next. We can do it next what, time. What calendar are we talking about? Our calendar, our meeting calendar for the summer into the fall. Did, um, did you give us one of those? Time? Nope, but I can do it right now. Fortunately, you just put it into your calendar on your phone and say every other. Yeah, week. I like it when it comes email because then I can you can just import it and it just you don't have to. Oh. Um, oh wow. Well, yeah, I know, I know, but that, you just spoon feed me. Why don't you? So. Uh, we don't need to do it tonight. It's I'm not. It's not urgent. I'm not going away. No, he's got it. He's got. He's got it right. Right now. He's got it. He's got it. Thank you, Thomas. The middle column. All right, thanks. Yeah, that looks good. Submittal date. Mm -hmm. Payment date. Yeah. All right. Any uh, any other any other business come before the board? You got that now, Phil? You're all set. Okay. Um, all right. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Yeah. Second. Second. Yes. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.